everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to go over the UFC Kansas City card from a uh, betting perspective this week. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, uh, this is going to be somewhat different than your normal betting breakdowns, because I'm really applying a lot of the uh, concepts that have been successful for me in all types of wagering, whether it be from MMA to, uh, to, to regular sports betting, which I don't do too often, or uh, more important to... Uh, uh, to my hedge fund career, where I, uh, I, I gauge uh, market psychology and, and, and psychology of stocks and um, uh, have been very, very successful over the last 20, 25 years uh, with that type of approach. And to apply those same concepts to MMA wagering seems to, have, uh, seems to translate really well because it's the same type of thing. You know, you, you, you have to presume, at least from the beginning, that the lines are I guess somewhat efficient, right? Um, you, you listen, you have millions and millions of dollars being pounded by these things, pounded into these pools. You have to imagine they're somewhat efficient. And when you're dealing with a 20 cent big plus on either side, it's very, very tough to get any kind of an edge. Uh, similarly, when you're investing in stocks or anything, when there's a transaction cost of any kind involved, um, you, you have to do better than just breaking them. Um, so the, the way to analyze pretty much most sports betting uh, is to figure out if you can, uh, what of all of what goes into the line, how much of that is driven by psychology, bias and biases, you know, go into different subcategories. Um, just basically public, I don't know, public stuff. that really doesn't have that much to do with the outcome. Uh, and if you can figure that out, then you, you can garner yourself a little bit of an edge outside of the normal you know, ways people think they can get edges, such as, boy, I'm just gonna just out analyze everybody else. I just know more than the rest of the world when it comes to analyzing these fights. I just kind of feel that a certain line is somewhat, somewhat off for some reason based on what my quote unquote quote, eye test tells me. Uh, but I found, again, this is, you know, you tapping into my, you know, don't know how old I am, but. I'm 56, so we're talking about 50 years of <laughs> 40 to 50 years of analyzing stuff like this. Um, that's really the best way to handle this is to is to not try to just out analyze from a data perspective, but just try to st step back, see what the public is on, see what of what analysis that's going into this just feels like more nonsense, right? And 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 fading those sides of the of the argument. You know, when it comes to MMA, as I've discussed before, you know, we, we talk about props all the time when we go into these wagers. And what I found with MMA specifically is people just kind of settle into a very binary outcome. Um, it's, it's not enough that you have to pick the side of, of who's going to win, but people just kind of gear into the if, if X wins, it will be because of this. Or if Y wins, it will be because of this. Basically turning a an infinity you know, uh, uh, outcome tree into a binary outcome tree. And, and whenever you have a situation like that, I promise you that both of those sides are just hopelessly overvalued. Um, so what we're trying to do is figure out where the public is, figure out where the bias is and fade that. And you, you end up getting some some pretty kind of weird, weird feeling bets. But listen, if you're going to watch the fights, um, you know, I'm not going to promise you this is going to make you money, but I promise you that, it will certainly give you, uh, at least on my experience, a long-term edge. And um, you can at least know that you're not going to be just following the crowd on, on all of these on all of these wagers. And uh, you'll be getting some five-to-one shots, some six-to-one shots. Sometimes we'll take favorites. But it's definitely, uh, we'll, I believe, will revolutionize, revolutionize, it will kind of uh, make you reevaluate the way you look at all things wager. Uh, nonetheless. Uh, let's get into it, and you'll kind of see what I mean. So first fight of the night, we have Jocelyn Edwards versus L Lucy Potoluva. And by the way, again, I forgot to go over the rules. The rules are there are 14 fights, and I'm going to be bet betting every one of my recommendations. I'm going to make one recommendation per fight, and I'm going to be betting one unit per fight. Now, again, that might not be the best money management in the world. Um, maybe some fights you're supposed to pass, some fights you're supposed to bet more or whatever. Uh, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm having fun here. Um, and I'm going to give you something each fight, and I'm going to be betting all of them for one unit. And for me, one unit is $180, just uh, to let you guys know. And I'll put be putting those in right as we 
uh, just after we, 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 we wrap this up. Sometimes DraftKing doesn't like when I put the bets in while I'm on Zoom. Um, so we'll just see if they let me. Otherwise, I'll do it right after. All right, so first fight, we have Lucy Pudilova versus Jocelyn Edwards. And uh, it's a kind of a boring-ish type, low-caliber low, low, uh, low women's fight. But what I'm hearing is, you know, that 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 Pudilova is definitely the more aggressive fighter. She is definitely the one that has more takedown upside. And in her last fight, she displayed, you know, a, a, a very aggressive a ground and pound type victory. And Jocelyn Edwards, apparently, you know, she she doesn't mind kind of like giving up her, her back. And it just seems to be just an incredible style matchup where Pudilova is probably should be a big favorite here. But for whatever reason, it's not like that. I mean, Pudilova has got to be, Pudilova's only a minus 135. I mean, who on earth would bet Edwards, given all those different style deficiencies and given how Pudilova coming back off of the, off of her layoff, just basically, as this is what the public is saying, is just a new fighter. Well, uh, that's not the way life works. It's not that easy. If it were that easy, Lucy would be like probably minus 250 and make a difficult decision. Here with this, with these odds, there's nobody in the right mind that could probably justify taking Edwards. So that's what we're going to do. So Jocelyn Edwards plus the 115 for 180. Okay, uh, moving on, we have Aaron Phillips versus uh, Gaston uh, Bolanos. Um, this is another one which to me is just kind of, you know, this kind of screams. This is, uh, well, you have both fighters kind of off a layoff, but Aaron Phillips is off a significant layoff. He was off for several years, and then he came back and fought, I think it was during the pandemic, against uh, Jack Shore, and he got choked out by him. And apparently he just has like a gym where um, he's you know, trying to market his gym a little bit, not really training. I mean, you, you look at his uh, Instagram, whatever, doesn't really show much training except for just training other people and things like that. And it just seems as though, uh, you know, he's just basically fighting out of his contract. And then you look up the tape of Gaston Bolanos, and he's basically a spinning back fist, like monster. Like if you pull up his his stuff for in like two seconds, like on YouTube, you can see him just KOing the whole world. And it just feels as though, you know, Phillips is just basically either mailing in his contract, fighting this out, not really training, maybe just putting out some publicity for his gym where Bolanos, even though he's off a layoff, he's getting KOs like all over the place. So my question is, why on earth is this only minus 195 and plus 165? Um, well, for me, that's going to be good enough. So I'm going to take the, the gym owner, no shot that he's possibly training guy, Aaron Phillips plus the 165. So Phillips plus 165, and it will be again for one. Uh, moving on, we have Bruno Brazil versus Denise Gomes. Um, okay, so so this this is this one is really really bizarre. Um, you have <laughs> Bruno Brazil, who is who's basically undefeated, coming in from a lower level promotion, and you have Denise Gomes, who you know she started off at about like a two to one underdog, and people have just been pounding the Denise Gomes side. Um, you know, for those of you who follow the DraftKings uh, analysis, they, they have Bruno Brazil priced as though she should be like a two-to-one favorite on DraftKings, and Gomez has all kinds of line value there, but this is something different. Um, and I guess the reason why is Gomes in her last fight was very, very active against uh, Luma Luke Bumi. A, a lot of takedowns, a lot of reversals and things like that. And Bruno Brazil really doesn't have a lot of, apparently, a lot of takedown defense. So, so you're going to have Gomez as, you know, kind of the really, really super sharp side here. And with all the money coming in, I just can't help it. We're going to take Bruno Brazil minus the 150 or 180. All right. Um, moving on, we have, uh, and again, we haven't gotten any big, big, you know, big underdogs or any big props yet. But again, what we're trying to do is just figuring out when, where the, where the, where the, the public is, and as far as which uh, as far as props go, the first three fights really didn't have any of that. You just had overwhelming agreement on a side, and the odds just simply felt fishy. That's why we have these three so far. 
All right, moving on, we have uh, Daniel Zell Huber versus Lenando Fanata. So this one I, I, I actually quite like quite a bit. So you have Daniel Zell Huber, who was a big hyped prospect coming in to the UFC in his last fight coming from Mexico. He was like a three to one favorite against Trey Ogden, and everybody had Zell Huber in his in their parlays and things like that. And he really, really disappointed. Um, and he's fighting another kind of just kind of like boring ish type dude in, in Lenato Venat and Landon Venata. But the weird thing that's happening with this type of matchup is when you look, feel all the industry, you know, you, you're what you're hearing is basically everybody giving Zell Huber a pass. They're saying, well, you know, it was his first his first fight jitters, this, that, and the other thing. If he even shows remotely the same thing they showed before that last fight, he should be should be fine here. So I haven't really found, except for like a one one or two really, really sharp people that are on the other side of this. Um, and yet still, Zell Huber's only like a minus 130. So I, I feel as though Vinod has just got to be just the side here. Um, uh, if, if anything, I might even take a shot at Vinata inside the distance. But unfortunately, he does have like like wrestling and submissions. So I think that might be sort of baked in a little bit. So let's just, again, we're getting a little boring right now. But let's just take the Vinata plus the 110 for 180. Um, okay, uh, moving on. We have Jillian Robertson versus uh, Pierre Rodriguez. Again, this one, I don't, I don't know. It's just right off the bat, I'm getting these straight bets, which are just like, just really just seem to be, be gimmies. So you have Jillian Robertson, who, who, who is, you know, she, she is a real good submission artist when she takes you down and she's very, very high level. Um, and she actually just just submitted uh, Rojama Yunus in a uh, in a grappling fight, but the real uh, narrative that you're hearing throughout the course of the week is that Jillian Robertson is uh, is moving down in weight, and really this is literally across the industry, and this is like what everybody is just 100 percent sure of, right? So think about this: is that the drop in weight means that her one deficiency, that being maybe she can't bully somebody, it, it, is going to be is going to be that deficiency is gone. And she should be able to be all over Pierre Rodriguez, get the submission. Uh, so the fights, the, the 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 bets you cannot make are either Robertson. You cannot bet Robertson certainly by submission. That's going to be really really overvalued. So we're just going to go ahead and take Pierre Rodriguez here, uh, plus the one ten. Uh, we're probably the only people in the universe doing this, and yet it's not as if she's <laughs> minus plus five to one. You know, we just take the one ten and and I guess lose. All right. Um, moving on, we have Zach Cummings versus Ed Herman. All right. For me, this is this is uh, it, you could either do one of two two things with this. All right. So he, here here are the narratives. Both these guys are old. Zach Cummings is not as old, but they're both coming off of big layoffs. And Herman is actually 42, 44 years old. And. The, the real consensus is that you shouldn't be betting this, that you should be passing, that that these guys are just not going to be very active or anything like that. Um, and Herman is certainly just just hopeless in mailing it in. So here are the here are, is what you can't bet. You can't bet Cummings by decision. You can't really bet the fight to go to decision because this is kind of like the idea. But the two things you can do, you could bet Herman plus the 185 because no one's doing it. Or if you want, you can play Cummings by some sort of finish. Okay. So let's take a look. Well, we, you know, we played a couple of these kind of small underdogs. So let's not play Herman here. Let's see what kind of Cummings props you could get here. Um, first of all, let's look at round props. Cummings round one plus 450. I mean... That's really not bad. Okay. Um, the other thing you could do, let's take a look at, at, at winning methods. You could do Cummings by submission plus 400, Cummings plus TKO by plus 450. But we're, we're going to, or we could just do him inside the distance. So win inside the distance is plus 200. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go Zach Cummings inside the distance plus 200. 
Um, okay, uh, moving on. Brandon Roy Val versus Mateus Nicolau. All right, so this is this has been kind of analyzed to death, and this is this is what the consensus is. Nicolau is the patient fighter, uh, and Roy Val is the madman. Okay, Roy Val is going to go a hundred percent, you know, to the wall. Going to go for submissions, go for takedowns. If he doesn't, if he doesn't get them, he's he's you know going to be in big trouble. And Nicolau is going to be very very patient. Uh, he's he's more of a of a counter punching striker. Okay. Um, but I have heard that it is possible that Nicolau might be able to catch him in the second round, third round, something like that. So here's what you can't do. Unfortunately, you really can't bet uh, Roy Val here. You also, unless you can bet him by decision, which is, boy, that's that's asking for it. But maybe we'll do it. You can't bet Roy, Roy Val uh, inside the distance because that's where everybody's convinced his, his win equity is. You can't bet Nicolau either round three – round two, three, or by, or by decision, um, because that's just what everybody's expecting to happen, that, that they'll fight it off and then either get a late finish or a decision win. So really all you could do is play Nicolau round one or Roy Val by decision. Roy Val by decision is, um, I mean, that's got to be a million to one, but let's just take a look at the different, different choices. So I'm expecting to see, like, what, what am I looking for? I'm looking for, I guess, Nicolau round one at like, if I can get plus 400, I'll definitely do that. If I can get Roy Val by decision to plus maybe 500, maybe I'll do that. Let's take a look. Let's look at the round props. Round props. Nicolau round one plus 350 is pretty reasonable. Roy Val by decision is plus 650. Um... I'll tell you this, the Roy Val by decision is something that nobody is playing. Um, do I have that in me? And it's so funny, like this is the way you, you analyze things, you know, is 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 I'm not I don't really have the opinion on the fight. I'm just trying to gauge which is the most overvalued piece between Nicolau round one or Roy Val by decision. I have to think that there are going to be some people playing Nicolau round one. So we are going to try this. This is just no chance to win. I'm just, I'm just telling you in advance, but we're going to do it anyway. Roy Val by decision plus 180. I just have to feel as though no one's playing this. So there's probably some inherent value in that. Uh, Roy Val, look, look at these. These are this is what people are playing. Okay, Roy Val round one, Roy Val round two. Your Roy Val inside the distance. I don't think anybody's doing this yet. It's only 650. So we're gonna we're gonna try this. Good luck. All right, moving on, we have uh, Bill Algio versus T.J. Brown. So uh, pretty easy, um, well, pretty easy in engaging the, the the public here. Algio has has the probably the, the edge everywhere, um, except for maybe the wrestling. Bill Algio, you know, is is going to have the volume advantage, and he's probably going to get you know either a pretty easy decision win or maybe a third round finish. Um, and TJ Brown, I mean, he's going to bring it, but I haven't really heard the way that TJ Brown is going to win. Um, so we're just going ahead and, 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 and take TJ Brown plus the 160. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to go for a method is because I think he can win in several ways. I mean, he could get takedowns and ride it out. He could get a takedown and, and win by submission. So we're just going to take the TJ Brown plus the I mean, plus 160 for 100. Clay Guida versus Hafa Garcia. Um, all right. This is this is probably the one I'm least confident in, only because uh, I just not I don't feel as though the public is really really taken aside here. I've heard a little bit of Guida love, maybe. Uh, I've heard some Garcia by submission, so we can't really do that. Um, so we're just going to probably just 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 wimp out here, and we're just going to go with kind of Garcia by decision. This is really, this is really the least confident of all of the the fights. I just don't really feel at at any edge here, even engaging where the decision where the um where the public is. We're just going to go Garcia by decision for the one eighty. All right. Um, moving on. Pedro Martinez versus Chris Gutierrez. All right, this one, this one I like. 
you have kicker versus kicker. That's it. You have Gutierrez. And they're going to say, forget about his last couple of finishes. Those were kind of blues. He's just going to kick at range. And Pedro Munoz is going to kick at range. Uh, and it's going to be boring fight. Gutierrez by decision. Well, not so easy. So we're not playing anything by decision. What we're going to do is we're going to take Gutierrez inside the distance. We are going to presume that that was not a fluke. Um, and we're going to see what round we want to try this. We have round props. Gutierrez round one plus 600. Wow. Gutierrez round two plus 850. How about just Gutierrez by um, uh, inside the distance? Let's see. Gutierrez inside the distance. That's by TKO or submission plus 275. I like that. So Gutierrez inside the distance for 180. Don't worry. We'll have, a, we'll have a bomb coming back to get all your money back after we lose all these other fights. All right. I hate to do this, but we're going to do this. Tanner Bozer versus Ian Kutalaba. This is a, uh, to me, this is, again, from a public perspective, I, there's just really only one thing you can bet here. So. You have Kudalaba, who is very, very strong in the first round. But forget about that. He has an incredible wrestling advantage over Tanner Boser. He goes for takedowns, and Tanner Boser cannot defend them. So this is an absolute just easy money, you know, situation for Kutalaba. Um, Bozard is cutting down in weight, you know what I mean? So, so, so he's going to have a – he's not going to be able to be as physical. And it's just going to be the easiest Kutalaba-style matchup you can have. Okay, so why is this only 130? Um, beats me, but I'm going to try it. So, so I'm going to take Bozer. And the question is whether I'm going to, if I could try Bozer by decision, maybe, just maybe, like a, just, is it time to go for the bombs? Is it try time for a Bozer round three? Let's take a look. Bozer by round three is 1,400. The problem is that that is kind of a narrative that's been thrown around. You know, the idea that Kudalaba tries to finish him, gasses out, then gets finished. Um, so I hate to be just too conservative here, but we're, we're just going to take Bozer. Um, we're just going to take Bozer in the fight plus the 110. We're all, I'm telling you, we're already contrarian enough. Nobody has. It. All right. Um, just a couple more fights, right? Okay, Dustin Jake Jacoby versus Asmat Murzakhanov. Um, jo 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 uh, Jacoby, according to what everything you'll hear, just basically has the edge everywhere. You know, he's 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 bigger, he's more technical. Asmat is a little bit obviously up in age. He's he's not as big. And Jacoby, you know, he had that that he and the thing you also hear is that he got robbed against um against uh, what's his name. Uh, he got robbed against uh, Khalil Roundtree, so he's out for revenge. Um, so all this is good enough for me. We're going to take Morris Akhanov plus the 140. All right. Um, just two more, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Billy Quarantillo versus Ed, Edwin Edson Barboza. So you're getting a little bit on both sides as far as the sides go. You have Billy Quarantillo, who is kind of a cardio monster, who is going to put the pace on Edson Barboza. And I've seen, you know, uh, listen, some very obvious takes where Quarantillo it just has too much pace for him. And, and Barboza is just, you know, getting up in age. He's not going to be able to deal with it. So I have heard a decent amount of Quarantillo uh, by decision, some even round three finish. And you are actually getting a little bit of Barboza as well, just because, you know, Quarantillo is not exactly, you know, the most offensively sound fighter in the world. Um, uh, so the only thing that you really can get with respect to um, uh, something that's not been really pounded, you could play Quarantillo in something like round one uh, if you want, or, and this is where we're going to go with this, it's just too easy to say that that Quarantillo is just going to put the cardio on him or whatever. Um, 
we're going to try Barboza inside the distance. Uh, no idea how that's going to actually happen, but we're going to try it. Barboza inside the distance plus the 330. Just kind of winning the striking battle, you know, not getting taken down. Um you know, maybe be getting the more meaningful shots in um, Barboza by decision plus three thirty. the The reality is, the better bet is the Barboza by KO. Boy, oh boy! This is gonna be one where I say you're really supposed to bet Barboza by KO, but I'm gonna, for the purposes of this contrarian show, play him by decision. No, I'm actually doing this, so I, I am gonna bet. Barboza by decision. We have we have to be pure, and that's what we're going to bet. Um, I, and last fight we have the uh, the main event, uh, which is Arnold Allen versus Max Holloway, and this is an extremely binary situation. You have the only way Arnold Allen is going to win is if he has this power edge and he gets to Matt Holloway early, um, because Holloway is just has all kinds of volume. He has five rounds of cardio. And just way too much. And Arnold Allen has never been five rounds. And and not only that, but Arnold Allen in his last couple of fights, you know, he had kind of scraps with lower level guys. And then you have Holloway, who also is, you know, the only guy he's lost to is Volkanovski. So we are going to take a shot at this. We are going to take the Arnold Allen by decision here. Um, and let's just take a look and see what we're getting on that. Arnold Allen round prop. Arnold Allen by decision plus the three thirty. Let's go. So we have one eighty times fourteen wagers, and we are going to go over them uh, once again. These have just no chance. I mean, honestly, Jocelyn Edwards plus one fifteen for one eighty. I mean, how how is she beating uh, Pudalova? Pudalova the revitalized Pudalova. Aaron Phillips coming out off of coming off a hundred year layoff, finishing out his contract. Only plus 165 against a guy who has nothing but KOs with spinning back fists. Sounds good to me. Hello? So I just had to pause for a second. So to review, so the Aaron Phillips, just no chance to win, so we're doing it. Bruno Brazil fighting all that Denise Gomes steam uh, with the lineups, uh, with, with excuse me, with the uh, with the line movement. We're going to take Brazil here, minus the 150. Bernardo Venata against uh, Zell Huber. We're, everybody's going to give Zell Huber a second chance, so let them lose. Um, Pierre Rodriguez against the lock, Jillian Robertson. L Jillian gain, the, dropping 10 pounds, that's all she needs. She should probably be minus 300. Why is she minus 110? Find out. Zach Cummings, 100 years old. This is going to be a real boring fight. Hey, maybe not. Plus 200 inside the distance. Roy Val either going to uh, obviously going to either K, either going to submit him or or if not, there's no way he can win the decision. Well, but if he does, we're plus 650 on that. TJ Brown, terrible fight IQ. Bill Algio just going to put a pace on him. TJ Brown has no chance, but maybe a plus 160. We're going to find out. Hoffa Garcia by decision. I really have no opinion there, but I put that in anyway. Gutierrez in the kick in the, in the boring kick kickboxing battle, uh, leg kicking. Well, definitely he's not a finisher, but we're going to try it at plus 275. Uh, Kutalaba with the incredible style edge. You know, there's just zero chance that Bozer can defend the takedowns. I think that Kutalaba should be looking like a minus 700 favorite. So let's take Bozer plus the 110. Muraza Khanoff, I mean, his obviously his 16-12-0 his record is totally fraudulent. He's small. He doesn't have volume. And he's just going to get pieced up by a resurgent Dustin Jacoby. Oh, but maybe not. Plus 140. Edwin Barboza, he's either going to get that KO or he's just going to just get completely outpaced by Quarantillo. But if the other thing happens, we cash your plus 330. Let's go. Arnold Allen by decision. Literally, the, the way that the only way he that he can't win is by decision. So we're going to try it at plus 330. 14 bets, $2,520. I guess we're going to lose them all. You guys want to be in there with me? Good luck to you. That'll do it.